Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Leanne Quimby, Office Administrator here at USITT, and I would like to welcome you all today to our Follow-Up Friday series. Throughout the summer, USITT hosts our 2021 Virtually Anywhere exhibitors to continue session ideas and conversations that were started during the conference. Today, we would like to welcome Brad Davies with Onsite Services Group. Brad will be leading a discussion on stage drapery and the fire code. Before I hand it over to Brad, please note that if you have any questions or comments throughout the webinar, feel free to post them in the comment section for Brad to see. Also, after the webinar, please be sure to check our USITT events page on our website, which you see listed below, for upcoming meetings, webinars, and learning events. Again, thank you all for joining us and enjoy. Here's Brad. Hello, everybody. Thanks for uh, having me here today. I'm going to uh, take you through a PowerPoint presentation that's going to talk about uh, stage drapes and the fire codes. So I'm just going to start here by sharing my screen, if I can do so successfully. Okay, I think everybody should be able to see that now. So uh, I guess let's get started. So where we're supposed to be these days, trade show floor, meeting people, talking to each other face to face. Uh, yeah, hasn't happened for, well, for quite some time now. Uh, and so this is where we are today. Uh, everybody's doing a lot of Zooms and a lot of Skypes. And so I think we're all getting weary of that. And hopefully we'll see you guys face to face in Baltimore. Uh, next year. So this presentation is going to take you through uh, your stage, your soft goods, and what you need to do to uh, to to uh, have it comply with the fire code. I'm going to talk a little bit about flame retardant treatments in terms of how they work uh, to, to prevent your, your stage drapes from combusting. And then we're going to get into a little bit of uh, best practices and care and maintenance of, uh, of drapes. So I'll uh, just move forward here. Uh, I have just a quick question for everybody. Just wondering, get a sense of what the community is doing. Um, if you could just throw it in the comments there, if you guys are planning, who's planning on opening with full audiences in 2021? Um, I don't know. I've seen lots of them are planning to do shows. Some people are pushing it off to 2022. So if you could just put, 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 put that into the comment section so that everybody can have an idea of uh, what everybody else is doing. All right, don't see any yet, so we'll just move forward here. So we're talking about your stage drapes and the risks. And so stage drapes are a large quantity of, of combustible material. Um, there's been some terrible fires that have happened in stage drapes. Um, so there's uh, been a couple you know, horrible uh, fires at Iroquois Theater in Chicago with 600, 602 people died. And so then in the end, uh, what's happened is, is, that, is that there's safety standards and codes that have been developed to, to protect from these kind of disasters happening again. And on theater stages, there's, there's you know, some special circumstances that would make it higher risk. So you've got lights, electrical sparks, and props uh, significantly increase the risk of fire. And of course, having so many people in, in one assembly occupancy does lead to concerns about how quickly people can evacuate if there is something that goes wrong. And so the NFPA first added uh, requires for textile flame proofing way back in, in uh, 1938. So it's not new. The regulations are not new. They've been around for quite some time. Just having a look and uh, uh, a look and some most people are saying yes to opening up this year. Uh, tentatively, yes, or some of them. Uh, I see Jessie has just treated her stage drapes in anticipation of, of opening. So that's 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 great. So it's good to see you. people are starting to be optimistic about getting back to business here in the theater industry. It's really been a, a tough go for everybody the last year or so, as I as I know. So getting it into the fire code to decipher it for you, it really comes down to what, where, which test, and when. And so I'll just take you through what those look like. And so the fire code specified drapes, curtains, netting, and other similar decorative materials. And so that would be your front of the house drapes and your stage scrapes, your back of the house scrapes uh, would all require, uh, would all be uh, c covered by the fire code and would require to be certified flame retardant. So the next question is the where. Uh, assembly occupancy is where most of theaters are gonna fall. 
And so that typically is occupancy greater than 100. Um, and so we're talking about school, theaters and auditoriums and schools, of course. The fire guard also specifies that in any public building, hallways and exits must have flame retardant materials. Uh, and then also um, healthcare facilities, but that doesn't apply here. So, so then the next question is which test? So the NFPA uh, specifies NFPA 701 uh, is the most common standard that is re referenced in the fire codes across America. Uh, in Canada, the fire code is the CAN ULCS 109. In the, uh, the NFPA advises that on an ongoing basis, so when you buy new grapes, it's the 701 really should be careful to ask your draper manufacturer to issue that certificate and have a look at that certificate because oftentimes those certificates are scarce or not delivered by vendors and therefore when the fire department comes looking for it you can't get your hands on it so i would be careful to make sure you get an nfba 701 from uh the vendor most stage grade vendors uh professional stage grade vendors will, will know this and will readily uh, hand it to you and then on a go-forward basis, the NFPA advises that existing graperies should be checked for, uh, required to pass NFPA 705. And it, it's ambiguous in a lot of cases as to how long the time frame is between these tests. Um, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. In our experience, practical experience, typically stage scripts are going to need to be cleaned and or flame retarded uh, every five years. And there's also some other um specifications that you should be aware of or test specifications that are in the fire code but really don't specifically apply to stage drapery so i'm just going to mention them here and and, and touch on them and, and move on but uh there's the nfpa 265 which is wall coverings uh so that could be decorative wall coverings and textiles and that kind of stuff and then there's also another one for uh for furniture so this is again not something you're going to often encounter but these are the specifications for for what would be done for nfba 265 so, so typically if you were buying a fabric covering for your wall it would come with an nfba 265 uh, st uh, test standard and as you can see by looking at the, the test itself it's not something that you're going to do on an existing wall it's more of a building code issue when you're when your theater is constructed the ones that make more uh, more commonly used in the in the theater space is the NFPA 701. And so, just to describe briefly what that looks like is you need to take roughly 10 samples, uh, six inches by 16 inches in size. And so, as you can appreciate, that's that's a yard of fabric. So, taking a yard of fabric out of an existing grape is destructive testing. And so, this is why this test is typically done. By the manufacturers of the stage drapery and so when they have a bolt of fabric that comes out of the mill it's supposed to be tested to 701 and certified to 701 and then that bolt of fabric is then assembled by the sewer uh, the person who makes the drapes and and then they would carry the same 701 certificate that came from the original mill would be applied to that specific drape and so um as you as you can see it's it is a destructive test and so it's something again done by the mill or the factory the people that make the drapes not typically done uh, to an existing drape hanging uh, on the wall. The 705 is the one that we most commonly administer, and so that's the field flame test. And so the idea is, is that if documentation doesn't exist or if uh, the documentation is old, like as in more than five years old, if the 701 certificate is more than five years old, it's, it's no longer current because what's happening is, is all fabrics are are subject to change based on the temperature and the environmental conditions that they have. Also would be based on what uh, type of fabric and, and how they were built, what kind of quality they are. And so it's not true to say that you can buy a stage drape and just leave it. Even an inherently flame re retardant drape uh, will fail the flame testing once it accumulates dust. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So the NFPA 705 test are going to be the procedures there. It's pretty straightforward. You take a a uh, piece of fabric, a uh, half inch by four inch in size, you put a standard match to it. Uh, and then there's some criteria that says if it, if it burns entirely or drips and the flaming drips do continue to burn, or if the, the uh, flame spread spreads over the whole sample, those are all indications that the, that the fabric is no longer flame retardant and needs to be cleaned and retreated. Um, it used to be known as the 701 small scale test and, and was renamed to the 705 in 1989. So there is a bit of confusion out there in the industry, but NFPA 705 is the one 
that should be administered by theater professionals on a, on a, on a regular basis to ensure that their soft goods are uh, are still flame retardant. And so those tests, uh, we do them quite often. They're not very expensive to do. Uh, if anybody needs uh, to do one, uh, we'd be happy to do it for free for any of the USIT team members. So reach out to me and we will uh, get you get some samples to us and we can get, give you some, some test, test results if you like. And the reason why this one makes sense is that it's not taking a square meter or square yard of fabric out of your drape. You're, you're taking a small sample. Traditionally, if you look at professionally made stage drapers, you're going to see beside the label, the tag that identifies them, you're going to see a little flap of fabric that's on there. It's about yay big, about you know maybe six inches square. And that flap is designed to, to uh, provide samples for NFPA 705 without having cut into the actual drape itself. And so if you look at your flap and you see that there is no uh, cuts been cut out of it, no half inch by four inch set pieces missing, then that'll tell you that your stage drapes have never been tested for flame retardedness and maybe something that you guys should look into. Uh, I got another question here. Just wondering uh, from, from you guys' facility standpoint, how often is everybody doing that, the testing of their straight stage drapes? A lot of theaters are doing it annually, every five years, every 10 years or, or, or never. Just, Wonder if I could get people to weigh in there and just give us a sense of what the community is doing for this particular issue. So I'll give a, we'll let that percolate a bit and I'll just keep moving. <clears throat> so the next section of the fire code is the when. And so uh, the NFPA uh, advises the flame proofing treatment should be renewed as often as required to pass NFPA 705. And so in our experience, it's really, it's a five year term. Um, sometimes you're gonna, it's gonna happen in four. It will be flammable in four if you have high humidity conditions or high dust. Sometimes you might get to six or seven years if you have brand new stage drapes that are in, in good condition. Um, but uh, but as a rule of thumb, five years is what we see, and we've done literally tens of thousands of stage draperies, and so that's a pretty good indication in our mind of what actually happens in the field in terms of the five year thing. And so what's not commonly understood is is that IFR drapery, so that's inherently flame retardant drapery, which I'll talk about more details later, but it's commonly understood mostly because the people who sell IFR drapery will claim this, which is that once you put up IFR, you don't have to worry about your flame retardantness. And in fact, once that IFR drape becomes dirty, it will fail the flame testing just as, as easily as an FR drape will. Um, and that's due to the accumulation of dust. And so we'll get into that um, in, in a few minutes as well. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, the fabrics that are used that, 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 that go into your stage drapery so you understand you know, the background of it and then, and then we'll get into the, the flame retardantness uh, of those draperies. And so fabrics are either coming from a natural source or a synthetic source. And so the natural sources that you would see in a, in a theater would be typically cotton. Um, but also you might see fiberglass drapes. So typically you find those in, in more of a school than you would a professional theater just because their sound and light absorption is not great. Um, and then you might see wool, some surges are come from wool uh, and wool actually has some natural uh, flammability, uh, flammability protection built into it. Um, and then uh, and on the synthetic side, your, your petrochemical based uh, synthetics are, are becoming more popular now. It used to be that the natural fabrics were, were everywhere and the production of these is typically done in Asia. And so mostly, most of the, the fabrics that you're buying, if they're synthetic, are coming from overseas. The cotton uh, drapes that you see in a lot of theaters uh, are, are produced domestically. So those fabric are, are natural fabric fibers that are produced uh, in, in the US. Um, so then you get on to the, the types of fabrics that you see in a stage drape. And so you can have a velour, a commando, or dutine is often called uh, a muslin, or wools. And so uh, those are the, the basic types of drapes so you're going to see. It's, it does vary a little bit by geography. Some uh, different climates will use heavier drapes in the warmer areas to, because the lighter fabrics don't stand up too well to the high humidity. Um, and so those are typically what you see. The colors are, are obviously designed to absorb light and, and, uh, and then the composition, again, mostly cotton and wool historically, but lately the more synthetics are starting to make an appearance. 
And then the fullness is just the indication of how many pleats you have on your drapes. So the more fullness, the heavier uh, weight it's gonna it's gonna look like. So then when you get into the fabric itself, um, the fabric weight and weave will affect the flammability of the fabric. And so if the fabric has a tight weave, it is less likely to ignite, just mostly because there's less air in between, which which uh, which inhibits combustion. And then surface textures will affect it. And so a heavier uh, drape with a with a, uh, a fluffy pile will be more uh, flammable than a, than a, a smooth, hard, tight tight surface. So this is where we talk just about the, the fabrics and the and the flammability. And so there's really there's two types of flame retardant uh, fabrics that you can have. Uh, one is either applied, which is a, which is indicated by FR or flame retardant, and then the other one is the inherently flame retardant. And so the distinction is is that the FR is the natural drapes. So cotton, for example, is naturally a flammable uh, textile, and so what happens is that uh, fabric is dipped at the mill with flame retardant, such that it will slow the combustion down, such that they'll pass an FPA 701, and then the Synthetics, what the inherently flame retardant uh, fabrics are synthetics, which have the flame retardant materials woven into the plastic itself, woven into the, the weave. And so the actual thread that's used to construct the, the, the drapery is not flammable or has flame retardant built into it. And so those are the two types that you get. Um, synthetics, typically speaking, are more costly than our traditional cotton drape. And uh, most theaters are two ways on this, but most big professional theaters prefer the light absorption and, and sound absorption that cotton brings. And in, in our experience as well, the synthetic fi some of the synthetic fibers are problematic in that they um, can generate st uh, static electricity. And so what ends up happening is your stage shapes end up looking like a giant swiffer because all pieces of dust are attracted to them because of static cling on them. We don't see that kind of behavior in a cotton drape. And so as a cleaner, we, we uh, significantly prefer the, the cotton drapes. Both ones, both drape uh, needs to, need some attention. So what we would say is every five years, typically those drapes should at very least be tested, but also uh, cleaned. So in case of an IFR drape, you would, we would clean it and remove the dust and then retest it. And typically speaking, that IFR drape will then pass the fire code because We've just taken out the, the dust, which is causing the combustion. The the uh, the other ones are the are the FR drapes, and so the FR drapes, the cotton drapes that have been treated and dipped at the mill, we would clean them and then reapply flame retardant to the rear of those drapes uh, to uh, to get them to pass the FPA 705, and so we would retest it after that. In terms of how often I see, just uh, just Jeremy uh, uh, piped up and said he does it every four years. Uh, and so we would say that, uh, that, that, that four years is great, uh, but also but, but five years is really what, what the, 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 you know, the turn is on this. So if your certificate is older than five years, you should certainly consider having it tested. Um, most professional theaters that we deal with will do uh, some sort of testing on an annual basis. So usually if they have large quantities of soft goods, they'll test five sets uh, a year and such that they can work through on a schedule to make sure that there's there's always uh, a current certificate for all of the, the drapes in their in their facilities. So a little bit about the flame retardant itself, how it works, how it's applied, uh, that kind of stuff. So they, there's two basic types of flame retardant and really it's retardant not proofing just to be specific. So everything will burn if, if it's uh, immersed in enough heat. So what these retardants are do, designed to do, excuse me, is to slow the process of the, of the combustion, uh, enabling time for fire prevention to, to get, or at the very least people to, to escape safely. And so there's two types of flame retardant. It's the halogenated and the thermal shielding. And uh, it's the thermal shielding ones that are most commonly used uh, these days. And so there's a little bit of history behind flame retardants and it's worth just covering over because flame retardants have had or, and sometimes still do have a terrible reputation for their environmental effects. And so the history behind this is, is that in the 70s, the state of California mandated the use of flame retardants in all kinds of different households goods. So we're talking baby pajamas, we're talking uh, 
cribs, we're talking all kinds of clothing, all furniture, all kinds of stuff, and it was mandatory. And what ended up happening is they, they figured out that the, the mandated flame retardant that was being used, which is these halogenated polymeric brominated compounds, were linked to cancer and neurotoxins and thyroid problems. And so that was obviously a big issue uh, back in the 70s. So what happened back then is they banned all of those ones. So all of those chemicals, you can't buy them. You haven't been able to buy them for many years. And so they basically don't exist anymore. What, they, what California went ahead and did is they redid their standard to say you don't have to use flame retardant, but you have to pass a certain flame retardant capability. So that enabled the manufacturers of the furniture uh, to meet the standard without necessarily using chemicals to do so. So they could do that by the materials they used, the way it was put together, that kind of stuff. And so um, it, it makes it possible for them to, to uh, pass the standard without using chemicals. And as I mentioned, the actual toxic chemicals that were linked to cancer uh, are banned, completely banned, you can't buy them anymore. So um, that's kind of like a story from the past. And so now the, the flame retardants that exist today are mineral based. And so they're really uh, chemically similar to salt. They don't have volatile organic compounds in them, which was the problem with the last ones. And the flammability or the health ratings of the flame retardant that we use is is really uh, nil. So they say, don't drink. If you drink a lot of it, you're going to get a sore tummy. So that's more or less the, the extent of this uh, as water-based and uh, as low odor. So there's no risk there. I'm covering this just because there's a lot of theaters and in, in particular theaters that exist in schools where parents know this history of the flame retardants and they'll start asking questions about uh, the flame retardants. And so I thought I'd just arm you guys with a little bit. If somebody asks you what is being sprayed in the school and is it going to harm my precious child? The answer is, is no. Uh, just going to throw it out to the, to the community again is uh, just asking if, if everybody is on some sort of schedule uh, to do their drapes. And again, I'll just let that uh, percolate and keep going. <clears throat> so drapes need to be cleaned first before you put the flame retardant on. The reason is because the flame retardant will stick to the dust and then it will fall. And what that means is, is that the flame retardant may be effective the day it's sprayed, but a year from now or two years from now, it's not going to have the same wearability that a clean drape would. It, it also is, is manufacturer specification. So manufacturers will specify that you have to have clean fabrics to apply flame retardant too. So if you have existing drapery, please, you need to clean them before you, you put the flame retardant on. Otherwise, you have the risk of your drapes looking like this poor one right here, which is one that was dirty and sprayed with flame retardant. And you can see how those white marks are really the congealing. It's like, it looks almost like a salt stain on your pants. And that's the uh, that's the congealing of the flame retardant around the dust. And uh, that if you shone a light on this drapery, it, it would look absolutely horrible. And um, the light absorption capabilities are ruined. The drape is effectively ruined by one single application of flame retardant without cleaning first. So just to talk to you a little bit about uh, care and maintenance of draperies here. So we believe you should be uh, addressing them annually for sure. So that would be uh, a vacuum or a light brush or beat them, beat them with a clean broom, have a dedicated broom, don't use the one that you use to sweep the floor, of course. And uh, so we definitely recommend that you put some attention to your drapery just to get the surface dust off. A vacuum will take off the surface dust fairly well. And so if you can, just give them a little service annually. And then also, of course, just to keep the dust out of your stage. So that means keep a clean stage because that dust is going to end up in the drapery. If you remember, these draperies hanging in the in the air are like giant air filters. And so the more dust, the more dust they're gonna accumulate and, and the uh, accumulation dust will definitely negatively affect the flame retardedness. So it's something to, uh, to be concerned about. Um, and then, uh, so the other things are just to, just to know, Karen, uh, your drapes is that if you see rips, they're gonna get bigger. So please uh, address them, that means sew them. Uh, sometimes you can use just a piece of, of tape to, to keep a small hole from getting bigger. Uh, but really, those uh, you, you should stay on top of that. There are also, um, you know, if a rip drape, a drape is badly ripped, most of the fire marshals that we know will fail that just because they know that the combustion of a 
ripped uh, piece of fabric is different than one that's properly hemmed and sewed, uh, mostly just because, of, again, the amount of air in between the fabric fibers will affect the, the, uh, the flammability. And we also recommend that annually you do test your stage drapes for, for, for uh, flammability with the NFPA 705 like we covered earlier. And so every five years, what we recommend for care and maintenance of, of your drapery is if it's IFR drape, clean them. Once they're clean, test them. Most commonly, they will be fine. Uh, IFR draperies won't lose their flame retardant properties. So flame retardant is water soluble. And so if it's washed or dry clean, it will be removed. In the case of an IFR drapery, that is more durable. So it can sustain uh, dry cleaning or washing without uh, affecting it. Of course, uh, we'll get into a bit of the effects of washing and dry cleaning on drapes in a second. And then the regular FR materials <clears throat> will wear off over time. And so those, those uh, fabrics need, again, every five-year cycle. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, <coughs> at the bottom there, if they get wet, uh, the flame retardant will, uh, will be compromised. So just a bit on how to manage your drapes. Please uh, fold them so you can see the webbing and you see the ties. Make sure they're labeled so you know where them. Please don't walk on them. You will crush the pile, and it would be very difficult to get that, to get that again. Don't drag them. Every little splinter they're going to get, they're going to get uh, pulled. And fold them, fold them pretty side up, pull it tight, fold on the seams, and, and store them in a in a dry bin, but not wrapped in plastic because they do need to make sure that they don't accumulate humidity in that, which will affect the flame retardant and also cause rot. Uh, stage drapes typically can't be ironed, so if you do have them wrinkled, just hang them up and give them some time to fall out. Traditionally, stage drapes are heavy enough but, but with the fabric weight itself and then chain in the, in the hems to pull out uh, the wrinkles. And uh, you can pull them to, to try and get stubborn wrinkles out of them as a, as a little tip that we use. So into the how do you clean them. So obviously we've got some opinions on this are, are us being on-site drapery cleaners and so uh the first question is can you wash them and the answer is you can wash them but they're going to shrink and so these two uh slides here shows this drape is this leg is exactly the same leg as this leg this leg was washed this leg was clean uh was not washed so as you can see there's about a four or five inch gap here from the and this is not even that tall of a drape uh, so that's the shrinkage caused by it being washed. And similarly over here, it's a little bit hard to see on the slide, but there's probably about a foot of shrinkage that's happened here from these draperies that have been washed. And so some cases you can add chain. In this case over here, there's no ability to add chain because of the way it's built. So effectively by washing your stage draperies, you can ruin them with just one single wash. Uh, and so we do not recommend that type of cleaning. So then the next one would be dry cleaners and dry cleaners are uh, first of all have a very small drum and so the drum or dry cleaning machine uh, is not built to handle a very large stage drape so a dry cleaner will traditionally split a drape into multiple uh, pieces and clean it and then reassemble it afterwards similar problems with the with dry cleaning as washing is is that dry cleaning despite its name is actually a liquid and so that liquid will cause shrinkage of, uh, of drapery as well and uh, we also are concerned about the environmental effects of dry cleaning. Dry cleaning uh, stage fabrics are, because of the high absorption of the pile, will absorb a lot of, uh, of, the, uh, of the dry cleaning chemical. And because they're typically going to shove that drape into a small drum, the centrifugal force is not enough to extract all of that dry cleaning fluid from the drapery. And so then you've got volatile organic compounds which are taken into your theater and will then off gas into your theater, negatively affecting the health of your staff uh, in, in the theater. And so we think that there is, uh, uh, you, know, you know, that that smell, that dry cleaning smell, of dry cleaning is not something so common anymore, but if we remember that smell of, of that sweet dry cleaning chemical, that's a volatile organic compound and that has been linked to cancer. And even the new version of the clean green dry cleaning chemicals, they're still volatile organic compounds. And so yes, they're less harmful to the environment than the old PERC, uh, which was a dry cleaning chemical, but, uh, but there still are some concerns around the environmental effects of these things, both for the environment, but also your immediate environment in your facility. 
And so, um, so yeah, that's that's our thoughts on dry cleaning. These are some pictures of grapes that have been dry cleaning, and so dry cleaned. And so you can see here this blotchiness here. What's happened is the flame retardant has reacted with the dry cleaning chemical. And when I, I mentioned that they can't because the grapes are so heavy, they can't extract the dry cleaning chemical. They can't extract it equally is the main problem. And so you see here this blotches is that some blo this blotch is because it didn't get extracted here it did get extracted so it doesn't look so bad and so you really don't know what it's going to get this drape this balance here is ruined we tried to remove those stains and they've been permanently set in because of the chemical reaction between the dry cleaning fluid and the flame retardant and then over here are similar things happening we're seeing this blotchiness that's occurring and unevenness this is directly related to the fact that the dry cleaning machine can't extract the, the fluid equally and uh, and is, is affecting it and further because both a washing machine and a and a dry cleaning machine spin at a very high centrifugal force to remove the fluids from the drape when they dry it's like your your washing machine at home when it spins it sounds a bit like a jet airplane taking off um, and that high centrifugal force is bad for fabric fibers in particular what's going to happen is it's going to stretch them it's going to stretch them unevenly and that's that uneven stretching, which means you're going to have one seam pulled and a ripple up the side, but then the other side won't be. And it's, it's very hard to recover from that because the damage is done uh, unevenly. And so it's difficult to, to fix. Steam cleaning is injecting uh, water into the drapes with soap. And if you think of a carpet, carpet on the ground has got a hard backing, hard surface, the floor underneath it. And so the, the steam cleaning machines work fairly well on carpets, and but it's because they can extract. If you have a drape hanging in the air, the the, uh, the water is going to go in, but can't come out because there's nothing hard surface to give it uh, enough suction to pull it out. So traditionally, what's happening is you're injecting it and you're not removing it, which is bad for uh, bad for the drape. Of course, it's going to end up with uh, mold and mildew in there, and also because you're using liquids you're going to be negatively affecting the flame retardant on an FR drapery so we don't recommend steam cleaning and uh, you know most carpet cleaning companies don't offer drape cleaning if you look on the side of the trucks and there's a reason for that it's because they know that that kind of cleaning technology is not well designed to clean a drape and so in the end you get this kind of this patchiness to it uh, and so again not recommended to steam clean uh, draperies and then the last option is the vacuuming. And so we definitely recommend vacuuming annually. But vacuuming, vacuum again, without the hard surface behind it, really can't get the level of extraction that is needed to properly uh, pull the, the dust out of, uh, out of the, deep, the deep fabric fibers. And so, we, again, it's great to get the surface dust off. We think it should be done annually if you can. Um, but it's not something that, uh, that, is, that is effective in deep cleaning the, the drapery, which you need to do in order to get the dust out to get the flame the, the flame retardants back where they need to be. Um, you can't lay them on the floor, and you can't walk on them, so it's really not, there's really no great option with a vacuum and a set of drapes other than just to get the surface dust off annually. Um, and certainly not a good preparation for the application of flame retardants. And here's what, what's happening is if you see on this drape here, uh, there's an unevenness, and the unevenness is caused by the fact that the vacuum goes like down a strip, and that it can't doesn't get perfect everywhere. It's not an even extraction process, and so these type of lines here, what's happening is the vacuum didn't get the dust out on that thing. The technician, when he was up high on the stage in a darkened area, it's hard to get uh, you know a small wand of a vacuum to to cover all that surface area perfectly, and if you miss a spot then you're going to get that kind of streaking because the flame retardant gets stuck to that dirty area of the drape and it's going to have a different texture and look than would be uh, the, the clean part of the drape or the semi-clean part of the drape. And so then again, once the dust doesn't get uh, taken out, then it will end up with this kind of spotting here that you see here, which is really the flame retardant congealing on the dust, which is embedded in the drape. Uh, so not, not a great solution. So of course, as everybody can expect, we do have a solution for this. We've been uh, cleaning drapes for... Uh, well, since 1978 using this technology. So this technology actually comes from the fur coat industry. So way back when, when people used to wear fur coats, um, the uh, fur coats can't get wet and because it, and the fur will fall off the hide if, if they do. And so there was a system was developed 
way back actually in the 50s and 60s to do to clean that and then adapted to clean draperies in the 70s and, and then we we now have this technology uh, are using it so this non-immersion cleaning uh, doesn't expose the drapes to any type of liquid and so the advantage there is is that there is no shrinkage because there is no liquid and, and we can guarantee that and so we're using uh, powder uh, which is a, a grit it's used for sandblasting and our special sauce makes it a little sticky and so what happens is the drapes will go into the drum here uh, like it looks like here you see it's very large so the drum is built to handle large stage drapes it's a 48 inch diameter drum and the drapes will go in there with a handful of our of our secret powder and the drapes will go around 10 seconds in one direction and 10 seconds in the other direction to make sure that those drapes don't get all tangled and, and wrapped up upon themselves and bound up in the machine so that it can extract and clean equally and then of note when our drum is turning it's turning at 12 rpms so this is not the spin that you see in your washing machine at home this is a slow tumble basically and the reason why that's significant is because remember when i mentioned that the high centrifugal force of a washing machine or dry cleaning machine will stretch the fabric unevenly and basically destroy it because it ends up with distortions of the fabric fiber so we're running at 12 rpm so it's really like a gentle tumble than it is like an extraction uh, type process. And then after we uh, go through the agitation cycle, we're going to go through the extraction cycle, which is we spin up a blower motor, which is 3,000 cubic feet per minute. So that's 30 times the power of your average vacuum. And what happens is the air is going to come through the door. You can't see too well, but the door has tiny holes in it. And so the air comes through the door as the drum continues to turn and the, the, it then extracts the dust and also the powder which is stuck to the dust into a filter which is essentially right here kind of like your furnace filter at home and so when that comes out if you do use our service ask to see the filter when your drapes are done you're going to see that to be virtually black which is all the dust that we pull out of that drape uh, and then that filter is then just disposed of in the regular garbage so the advantage of our system is we'll guarantee not to shrink it. Nobody else will guarantee not to shrink it. We will guarantee not to shrink your drapes. But you look at the before and afters here, you can see that this after looks more like a new drape. This thing looks really sad and tired. And also look at the pile on this drape. So this pile is new, is fluffed up like it was when it was brand new, where it's supposed to mat it down like this. So if you wash a drape, it's gonna end up being flat and, and limp and not have that fluffy pile to it, which is the fluffy pile is what's gonna give you your sound and your light absorption. And so it's an important component of the drape. We also guarantee we're not gonna bleed the colors in any way, because again, we're not using liquids. And so we're quite comfortable with that. We guarantee not to damage the fabric in, in every way. And also since we're not using liquids, we don't remove the existing flame retardant that is there. So if you wash a drape, and remove all of the flame retardant and then want to get it to pass again you need to build it back up off in silver coats in order to get it to pass the, the flame testing in our case we're just simply removing the dust not the existing flame retardant so in most cases we can add just a light spray of flame retardant in, in, in order to have it pass and that's important because if you end up with too much flame retardant on your drape you're going to end up with blotchy stains and so what you want to do is a delicate balance of just enough to make it pass the fire code for five years but not too much that it's going to make it look funny and when the light shines on it, it's going to look funny. So, um, so yeah. So those are the those are some of the things that we do. We also uh, you know, we talk a bit of the flame retardant here. Uh, we also have this large drum, and so we can do. Our machines are mounted in trucks, and so traditionally we will go to the theater themselves, and so we can handle very large quantities of drapery in a single day. Um, you know, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of five to six thousand square feet of drape uh, a day. And so we can, uh, we have very high capacity, which means that we can go to a theater, a lot of theaters we can do uh, in one day, maybe two days if it's a very large theater. And so the advantage there is, is that you don't have to take your facility offline to, in order to have your drapes flame proof. We're also real proud of, of our greenness. So, you know, dry cleaners are still using perk, perk which is bad, or they're using the, the new version, which are still VOCs. We uh, don't heat up water and flush it down the drain. We don't use soap. We don't use energy to heat the water. And so because it's non-immersion, there's no wasted energy. Our waste itself, what comes out of the filter has been tested by an independent lab and contains no toxins of any kind. Our powder itself is green. Uh, there is there's no environmental uh, negative effects of the powder itself. 
And we calculate that last year, just based on the number of drapes we've cleaned, that we saved about 120,000 gallons of hot water, 40,000 gallons of, of uh, dry cleaning fluid. It, it was it didn't need to be used because of people using our system. And so we're proud of that in, in, in today's world where we all need to be careful about taking care of our plant. So just to sum it all up, and then I'm going to uh, take some questions if there are any uh, on, the, on the chat here. And so what we covered today was the fire code requirement, so essentially it rolls up like what? Well, for you guys, it's your drapes. Front of the house and back of the house uh, need some attention, of course. They're both in the assembly occupancy spot. And so the where, again, the assembled occupancy, assemble, assembly occupancies are the ones of concern, which is typically any room with an occupancy greater than 100. So that's pretty much every theater we know of. And, and then also the lobby and the exit is of concern. So if you have drapery in your lobbies, you, you need to... Uh, be concerned about the flame retardantness on those. And then simple summary on the witch test question. So the witch test is basically be sure when you buy new drapes, you're going to get a current NFPA 701 certificate from the manufacturer. It's very important. We have seen lots of uh, overseas vendors selling products without those kind of certifications. And if you're not careful, what's going to happen is they'll hang in your, in your facility for a year until the fire marshal shows up and asks for that piece of paper. And effectively, without that piece of paper, it's going to be very difficult to comply with the fire code. We've also seen um, some fabric manufacturers that have issued, I guess, maybe fraudulent, but also just wrong uh, flame retardant certificates. And so we've bought and seen draperies which are brand new, which fail the flame test. And that's pretty concerning because there's a piece of paper that says it does pass. And so again, it's important to know your vendors. Uh, Again, a lot of the stuff uh, from overseas and in Asia is coming out with uh, inferior quality. And so I think we need to be concerned about that. We ourselves prefer the, the cotton North American made draperies to the synthetics, partially because of that. And also because of the, as I mentioned, the static electricity thing seems to be common among certain types of IFR drapes. Not all of them. There are some good IFR drapes out there. Don't, don't get me wrong. And then on a go forward basis, the uh, NFPA 705 is the, is the right test to do. Again, a lot of theaters that work with us, big theaters, professional theaters, will do it annually. Others, like schools, might do it every five years. We certainly recommend that every five years, at the very least, you test it, and then you know you have a good indication of whether it's flammable or not. Uh, the test itself is not ambiguous. It's either burns or it doesn't burn. It's usually quite clear as to the result. And so if it does burn, then then you need to consider the process of having it reflame proofed And as we went through, first you need to clean that, and then you need to have the flame retardant applied. The flame retardants themselves are, uh, as we talked about, the either FR or IFR. And so the FR are the cotton fabrics or synthetic fabric or uh, natural fabrics that have then been treated with a dip or a spray type process, which uh, would basically inhibit the ability of the flame to access the combustional, combustional portion of the drape. So if this is your fabric fiber, you know, wrap it in a, in a shield of salt-like um, uh, chemical, which basically prevents the flame from getting to the, the burnable part, which is the cotton in the middle. The IFR drapes, the difference there again is, is that that fabric fiber is woven itself with a plastic which is made to, to have flame retardant capabilities in it. So it's not dipped, doesn't need to be sprayed, um, and usually can be just cleaned to remove the dust in order to have it pass if it does fail the flame testing because it got too often. And again, the when is, uh, in, our, in our opinion, it's every five years you need to certainly consider re uh, treating your drapes and again you might test every year and get six years out of it uh, that's fine but we do think you should uh, plan for a, a roughly a five-year term uh, and then care and handling of the stage drapes we talked a little bit about them so you know beat them or vacuum them annually uh, take care of them take care of your theater keep the dust out of your theater don't let them get wet test them uh, clean them and then uh, you know as of course we recommend that non-immersion uh, Cleaning is the best way to, to clean your drapes without uh, damaging them and having them look good. So that's just a quick schematic of what our truck looks like, one of our brochures here. Um, so thanks a lot for, for listening. And I'm gonna just hang around for a few minutes. We'll give you a few minutes for any questions if there are questions. And uh, I certainly encourage you to hit our website to learn more. There's more stuff on flammability and, and that kind of stuff if you have any questions. I'm Brad at onsitedraperycleaner.com, or you just hit the uh, contact us button. I get all those emails as well. So if you need to reach out to me for any types of questions, please do. And also, just as I started earlier, is, is that for
for people who are here today, if you want to send me a note, an email requesting a, a, a flame test, anybody who does so from today's session will get a free flame test. And so traditionally we charge $200 per sample. And so we would do that for free. And the way you could do that is just, uh, is we'll give you instructions on how and where to get the, the samples from your drapes and you can just send them to us and we'll conduck the testing and get back to you with the results and talk to you a little bit about uh, the condition of your stage drapes. So that offers out open to any member of the USITT that was here today. So just mention the today's seminar and, and uh, we'll do that for you no problem. Anyways, if there's any questions, now's the time. I'll give you just a minute to compose. Doesn't look like there's going to be a, as much discussion as we get when we do this in person. Um, so I'll just uh, I'll just sign off then. I guess I think we're we're mostly good. And uh, you can all uh, again reach me on the on the website if if you like, and I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions you might have. So thanks again, guys, and I look forward to seeing everybody in 2022 in Baltimore in person. And uh, thanks again. Have a, have a good weekend. Thanks, Brad, for joining us today and for all that great information. Um, I have posted your website down below for anyone who's interested. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. Don't forget to check out our website for more upcoming events and take care.